Hey guys, welcome to Rock Talks. Today we are talking to Joey Vera, bass player of Armored Saint. We discuss the whole story of their masterpiece, Symbol of Salvation, the new live DVD, what it was like when John Bush was asked to join Anthrax in 92, the reunion in 99 for the Revelation album, and more. If you like this interview, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Hello, jo Joey, how are you, man? Thank you so much for your time. Welcome to Rock Talks. Thank you for having me. Good to Great. be here. Great. So let's start. Uh, let's sure. talk about this new life DVD that Armored Saint is putting out, you know, the symbol of salvation in its entirety life. So please tell me everything about this uh, release, the release date, the track list, the recording experience. Donuts. Ooh, uh, <laughs> you're testing me. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I know all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> it comes out October 22nd, yes. I, I think, yeah. uh, on Metal Blade Records. Um, and uh, it's our live recording DVD and audio and LP and CD <laughs> of uh, Symbol of Salvation, which we performed live in New York City in its entirety, front to back. Um, you know, it's got all the songs on it. I, I, uh, <laughs> see if I can get the track listing right. Uh, it's, it's all the track listing, Rain of Fire, Dropping Like Flies, Last Train Home, Truth Always Hurts, Half Drawn Bridge, Another Day. Oh, you're testing me. This is pretty good. <laughs> um, um finalist right the last track well that's that's well side two is symbol of salvation um <laughs> burning question or i forget what's after that yeah, you the got burning question, them, hanging right. judge in order war zone amazingly yeah chained past <laughs> spineless there well, i did it amazing <laughs> um yeah i know that is amazing i might have got the order mixed up side two sorry that's um, but, my favorite Armored Saint record, and I don't even, I don't even remember the track list in order. So <laughs> good job. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to do. Um, we had a chance to go out and tour, and we thought it would be a good idea to. Um, we knew that this anniversary, this 30 year anniversary, which is happening this year, uh, we knew it was coming up in 2018. So we had an opportunity to do some dates, and so we said, let's do something different with this tour instead of just going out and playing a regular headline set um maybe it would be fun to do a record in its entirety and symbol was coming up for anniversary so we took that opportunity to do it the label was really into it so we went out and did a bunch of dates um and uh the new york show was the only one that we recorded though with with the five cameras and all that stuff um and uh, it was a lot of fun to do, you know, the fans loved it. And uh, we also did a year short European tour with the same, the same thing, doing the, doing the record, all, the whole record all the way through. So it was a lot of fun to do. It was really, really cool. And we we're really happy with the way it came out. Um, the end results, the video looks great. There's a lot of energy and um, this production and everything's great. So, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a fun little thing. So you, you choose this particular album only because of the anniversary, uh, the, the 30th anniversary, or there was well, another reason? There was another reason, too. I mean, I, I think that that record, um, people, uh, fans, I would say, often cite that record as being um, their favorite record from our whole catalog, <laughs> you being one of them. A lot of people do. Um, and I think it's for a variety of reasons. Everybody has their own reasons for that. But a lot of people reference that record as being kind of like a, a pinnacle point for them, for fans. Uh, for a lot, like I said, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, for a lot of people, they were first introduced to Armored Saint on Symbol of yeah. Salvation. So a lot of people, when the record came out in 1991, um, 
that was the that was their introduction to the band so so that that is another reason why i think a lot of people kind of point to that record so you know when we talk about our whole catalog that record is a standout record for for various reasons and i have my own personal opinions about that but a lot of fans have seem to agree that that's kind of like the 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 best record of the catalog i might argue that i might say that punching the sky is the best record, of the <laughs> but that's another story yeah 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 we, we'll get to that in a few minutes don't worry <laughs> So 1991 was the year that uh, Symbol of Salvation uh, was out. Uh, this was a really difficult time for the band because, because of the recent death of uh, Dave Pritchard, your, the original guitar player, right? So how did yeah. you get the inspiration to write such a masterpiece without your original guitar player? Well, oh, the, the, the story goes that um, uh, we, were dropped from our label Chrysalis in 1988. And so from my, right at 1988, we began writing new music because we were looking for a new record deal. Mm -hmm. So Dave was still with us. And so we were writing material and trying to get another deal. So we wrote a whole bunch of songs. Um, we did some touring. We released a one-off live record with Metal Blade called um, Saints Will Conquer. And that came out in 89. And then we, you know, just kept writing and started doing showcases for, for record labels. Um, and no one was biting, no one was interested. Um, there was a change in the music scene at that time, if you remember. Damn, you're hair metal. Yeah. <laughs> well, hair, hair metal was pretty getting pretty big in 1989 at this yeah, point. Too. So Let's we're talking rope. about Skid Row, we're talking about Poison. Guns and Roses a little bit later. So those, that whole scene, Rat, of course, you know, uh, the list goes on. Uh, but uh, the scene was, was shifted, you know, and we weren't really a hair band. We were, I don't, we don't want to know what we were at that point. We were just Armored Saint. And so we were working at that time, writing a bunch of material. And during that time, we wrote something like, 23 songs or something during that period and we didn't find out about Dave's illness until late 1989 early 1990 and 89 it was in 89 when we found out and so he went in to have this operation to have a, a bone marrow transplant to try and cure the leukemia and he didn't survive the procedure and that's when he passed away uh, in early 1990 so remember at this point we were still without a record label we were just writing music but with dave pritchard we have written 23 songs right mm. so this is the story of symbol of salvation um after dave died in february of 1990 we were like devastated like he was our only guitar player and our one of our main songwriter it was just devastating as also he was also our deep friend you know well, of course yeah. it was a very hard thing to go through so we basically were not sure what we were going to do if anything we were about ready to call it quits really and brian slagle from metal blade who's always i have to say always been a friend of ours since in 1983 and always been a supporter of the band so he came to us and he said, look, you know, I know you're going through hard times right now, but don't let this all go to waste. All the last three or four years you spent with Dave writing all this great music, don't let it go to waste. Um, let me put this record out. I, I love the songs you've written. You know, Metal Blade has a new distribution deal at the moment with, with Warner Brothers Records. This was in the early 90s. Uh, and so we were like, I mean, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's let's we don't want all this work to go to waste. And it would be a shame for Dave, you know, all the work he did. And then there would just be all horrible if we never did anything with this. So we agreed to do the record, make a record, and we pulled ourselves back together. And, you know, we got Jeff back in the band and we got Phil back in the band. And then um, we made Symbol of Salvation. So that's kind of the nutshell story of how Symbol came about. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, so thank you very much to Brian Slagle. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, pushing you guys. Thank goodness for Brian for a lot of things, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, he that was the that was really the start of uh, of the second half of our career, I guess you could say. Um, and Brian, we owe a lot of it to Brian. He, he he was the one who said, like, dudes, you know, I'm a big fan of your band. Don't quit. You know, <laughs> let me make let me put your records out. And to this day, we still have that relationship with him. So it's so, it's great. So you you guys actually started to write uh, Symbol of Sal Salvation back in 89. Yeah. You know, we didn't know that it was going to be Symbol of Salvation. We were just like. Oh my God, we need to get another record deal. You know, <laughs> we were without a label and we were like, all right, let's, what's next, you know? And so we just started writing. So we wrote like, you know, we wrote like whatever, eight songs or something. And then we wrote 10 songs. And then we said, okay, okay let's do this. We, we started making demos and we started sending demos to lawyers and booking agents and record labels and, Then we had showcases. We booked gigs at the Troubadour and the Roxy or whatever here in Hollywood. And we'd invite people from record labels down and they were all coming down, but they were just like, I don't know, you know, it's, you guys don't fit in with the climate. And the climate was the hair metal. That's yeah. what the climate was. So they were like, I don't know, we don't know what to do with you guys. And so no one was biting. We weren't getting any offers. So we kept writing. We wrote another five songs and we had 15 songs. We wrote another five, you know, 20. We just kept <laughs> writing, you know, and that was all we that was all we knew. So we we had no idea that it was going to end up being symbol of salvation. We were just yeah. we were just fucking working. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, it was their loss. <laughs> For real. <laughs> But I asked the, 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 the date of the writing sessions for this album, because to me, uh, despite uh, the writing process started in 80, 89, and it was released in uh, almost late, 91, uh, yep. sounds really fresh, sounds, doesn't sound like, like an 80s uh, heavy metal record, sounds current for, for the, the 90s sound, right? Yeah, for, for that time, sure. Yeah, and, and I think, I think there's a reason for that. And I, and I don't, I don't think I realized this until much later, mm. but um, I think that, and this is, this is going to touch on why I think this record is pretty special from my point of view. But um, I think that when we were in this period of time, when we were writing between 89 and 91, basically um, we were at a point where we were like, you know, Kind of like how do we fit in with the climate and what are we doing and where do we go where do... but we started to take chances i think musically internally and so we started to kind of pull influences from a lot of the bands that we were inspired by growing up in the 70s at that time and so bands i'm talking about bands that were pretty they would put out diverse records the records had a lot of diversity it wasn't just one set of music Bands like UFO, Thin Lizzy, Queen, bands that had that put out records that had a lot of diversity in them. And those bands were had a big impact on us in the 70s. So we kind of started fooling around with that. We started writing things that were a little funky and a little bit bluesy mm -hmm. and things that were sort of artsy, you know, tainted past, things like that. And so we started taking chances and incorporating these things into the music that we were writing now unbeknownst to us we didn't know this at the time but this writing for this record was going to set us up for what we would become today and so yeah. that's why this record i think is important to us and and again i didn't really realize this until much later like i'm talking like maybe sometime in the two early 2000s i started to look back at our whole career and go what was what was our, the story with us? You know, what, what was our thinking through all these periods of time and how did it affect us, you know? And so I think this period of time when we kind of had, like, we, it was weird because we had everything to lose, but we had nothing to lose at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Right, you know, you know what I mean by that? I got so you. Yeah. In this time period, like, we were trying to get a record deal, but 
we weren't getting a record deal. So we just kept writing and we were writing for ourselves and also just expressing ourselves as musicians and writers. And so we kind of were like, you know, it was almost like, okay, if you're not into us, then fuck you. We're just going to do what we're going to do and we're going to do it for our own sake. And so that was kind of something we actually needed at that point. And so that's why I think that I look to that record with a lot of fondness for those reasons, you know, because it kind of set us up for like the future, like where we are nowadays. It's like, I feel really confident about the music that we write now because I feel like we have this, this uh, ability to write music that is somewhat modern, but somewhat, you know, it also has influences from the 70s, but it's also influences from music that's yeah. more current than that. Yeah, yeah. And, and somehow we're able to blend it together and make it feel honest. And I don't think that's very easy to do. So I think that a lot of that stems from that period of time that we took during mm -hmm. the writing of Symbol of Salvation. Yeah, to me, a symbol of salvation, it's kind of like the bridge between the, the 80s era of Armored Saint and the later era, which is uh, La Raza, Wing Hands Down, and of course, Punch in the Sky, because it sounds yep. really different. Uh, Ar Ar the Armored Saint from the 80s and the Armored Saint from the 2000s, it's yeah. kind of like almost two different bands, but of course, you can identify uh, John's uh, uh, voice and, and, yeah. and the rest of the guys. So. That's why I think yeah. also our symbol of salvation is a, a really important record in your discography. But uh, back in 91, I was five years old. So I yeah. wanted to ask you, how was the response uh, for the album back then for fans and, and critics? Well, it was very good, actually. The, the release uh, came out and all the critics loved it. We got great reviews in magazines. Uh, we the fans loved it you know even the the fans from the 80s the yeah. early 80s they loved it you know i think it had enough of everything because it was by that time by by our standards it was a pretty diverse record yeah it's so, really balanced, balanced right yeah there's a little bit of everything kind of so i think for the old school fans it had enough kind of heavy songs and you know it had spineless and rain of fire and you know symbol of salvation it had heavy songs on it but then it had some experimental things painted past another day kind of ballady last train um, home last Me. train home was a little bit kind of like i don't know commercial-ish if you want to yeah. say that power um, ballad late power ballad ish <laughs> in a way yeah. yeah in a way and then you had some bluesier things like you know the truth always hurts which was a bit of a stretch for us and so you know it had a little bit of everything so but it kind of appealed to a pretty wide uh genre you know and yeah, yeah. i think a lot of people like i said earlier were it was their introduction to us it was like oh who's this new band armored saint you know because <laughs> at the yeah at the time uh headbangers ball was was a pretty big deal when the record came out in 91 and we got like tons of airplay for rain of fire our yeah, first yeah. single and our first video i think it was on it was on every week for something like 14 weeks straight which was at the time we were like oh my god we made it it's amazing you know yeah, yeah. but <laughs> the strange thing about all this is that it got really good responses and it got really good um you know reviews and things like that but again the buying public, the people that were purchasing CDs at the time, because CDs were relatively, it was the new format the in 91. Um, the, the, again, in early 91, not only were we battling the leftover hair metal genre, but as you mentioned earlier, grunge was becoming thing. Yeah. So people's attention was like, whoa, what's this Seattle scene? And um, I was one of them. I was, I loved it. So I was one of those people like, oh, this is killer stuff coming out of Seattle. You know, what's going on? Um, but it kind of reflected re uh, record sales. So while we all, we got a really good response, our perception was really great in the press and I think in people's minds, but actually selling records, people making people spend money and buying the record 
that was a whole nother story. Um, mm -hmm. It did pretty well for a band like us who for three years were dropped and kind of had to make a comeback, yeah. which is kind of what that was like. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did pretty well for that, but I think that a lot of people had a lot of people in the label and in management and maybe even ourselves kind of had a little bit higher expectations, <laughs> but uh, maybe you know, if you released the album in early 91 or late 1990, it would be a different story, right? Like, sure, you before? know, timing, timing has a lot to do with, yeah, with things sometimes. Time and uh, yeah, so probably was a difficult time for us to be able to uh, weed through and muddle through that situation, you know. Um, and not only that, but then you also had metal going through its own transformation in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, it was the beginning of death metal. Yeah. And it was also the beginning of... Um, careers from bands like Slayer and Pantera, which were taking metal in another direction. So, yeah, sure. you know, then we were, here we were with this really diverse record, like, hey, look at us, you know. <laughs> but, well, you know. In, in a way, you achieved the impossible, which is made every, everyone <laughs> happy, right? All the fans, all the media, all the critics, because most of the yeah. time it's like 50-50 uh, or maybe 60-40, like 60% of the fans is happy about the new age of a band and 40% 40 is missing the old days, the old, the old sound. But with uh, Symbol yeah. of Salvation, it was like pretty much 100% of the, of the fans were, were happy about this new album. Yeah, you know, and again, it's, it's all hindsight. You know, when you look back on it, you realize, you know, it was a good, it was all a good thing. It wasn't a bad, and nothing was, really bad about it you know it was it, it it was important for us to live through that you know and that's why we that's why we celebrate this record mm -hmm. and of course uh, john went to sing for anthrax in 90 late 92 actually right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah it was mid 92 yeah oh all right yeah because sound of white no is what uh, was out in 90 93 but uh, for, for a moment, did you actually, I mean, you and, and the band, uh, think about to continue without John, to, to take advantage of the momentum uh, that uh, Symbol of Sal Salvation gave you? No. Um, it, it's funny you use the, the word momentum because uh, we should have perceived it as momentum, but we were instead believe it or not, because of this, uh, this kind of uh, failure to reach this expectation that I mentioned a second ago, mm -hmm. we were starting to let it affect us internally. And so okay. we were beginning to argue internally within the group. We were like, uh, you know, questioning what we were doing, second guessing ourselves. Should we have done this? Should we do this next time? What should we change? Um, and those are things, those are just those things are just terrible. You know, they just ruin you uh, when you start doing that. Um, takes away your honesty and your, it ruin. it starts to tarnish your integrity. And it's just, those are, those are bad things. <laughs> so those were infecting us actually, by the time Symbol of Salvation, the touring cycle was done about 12 months later. And the record came, the record label came to us, Little Blade, and they said, uh, look, you know, you got great reviews and the fans love it, but it, the record's just not selling. We can't push anymore. We can't put any more money into you. You got to stop. You got to go back and you got to start writing your next record. And we were just like, oh my God, really? Like <laughs> after everything we went through, we were like, I don't know if we have it in us. We, we're going to have to take some time off here and, and think about and work on that. And it was right then that John got the call from Anthrax. It was almost oh, perfect timing. And so we were perfect timing for a breakup is what yeah, I mean. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was almost like we needed a reason to take a break. Oh, okay. And that, was the, that was the that was the reason. And so when he came and he said, you know, I'm thinking about doing this, him and I had 
personal conversations um, outside of the band. And, you know, he's one of my best friends in the whole world. We've known each other since we were six years old or something. And so I said to him, you know, I, I, I want you to pursue this because I can tell that if you, if you don't pursue this and you don't at least check it out, you're going to hold it over my head for the rest of your life. <laughs> You know, so I don't want that. Like, you're my friend. I'd rather you go check it out. If it doesn't work out, then, you know, you come back and we'll sort out the Armand Saint thing and we'll figure it out. But you but already said no to Metallica. Don't say no to Antwerp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, and things were like, to be honest, things were, it was, it was weird because with Symbol on the outside, it was looking like things were going really good for us. But on the in the back offices like in, internally mm -hmm. and with actual record sales and money spent and all that it was wasn't all that rosy so we were in a questionable part like you know what are we going to do um how do we, how are we going to move forward you know that kind of a thing so it was kind of like i said perfect time for us to say whoa 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 you know we at that point we'd been a band for almost 12 years we put out four records We went through the whole major label thing. We lost our friend. We went through all this stuff, you know? So it was like, it, we were tired. We were mentally, uh, psychologically pretty tired. And so it was time to, to take a break. So when he left, it was, it, I was like, that's, we need, that's it. We need a break. No more, no more Armored Saint for a while. I can't speak for everybody in the band. I, maybe they had different feelings, but it was never a discussion. Should we, do, should we replace John Bush? There's no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's almost impossible to do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, it's weird because some bands, some bands have done it, you know, yeah, yeah, um, tons. I think it depends at what point you are in your career, maybe, or I don't know how much you really work it uh it could be done it's been done yeah you know, there's you a can lot do of this, it but i don't know if you, you know, can succeed doing that yeah, yeah. it's yeah, tough yeah. i mean when you have a singer like john i don't know i mean you you, you, so you could argue that uh bon scott was is tough to replace but that, but they did it with brian yeah. johnson and right. he he owned it he he's he's brian johnson he's not a copy of of uh you know Bond, so he it, you can be done but it's it's not an easy battle and i guess it, it depends i think it depends on a lot of things but yeah and since but we're we, talking this uh, hiatus forced hiatus in uh, 92 right yeah yep and how come did you guys decide to get together in the year 2000 and record a new album and eventually well, go, go, go on tour right yeah well it's a it's a funny thing the way the trajectory went after that because when we first broke up there was no discussion at all like oh don't worry this is only temporary you know <laughs> uh we'll come back together and we'll work again it's no big deal it, that was never discussed because it was like john was on he was on a new path and it was like with all intents and purposes that was forever so yeah um But sometime during the mid 90s, mid to late 90s, um, you know, we were obviously still friends. So I would see John when he was, you know, not on tour or something, not working with Anthrax. And at that point, I had joined Fate's Warning. So we were both still working and we'd cross paths sometimes and we'd still talk. And occasionally we'd say to each other, you know, I was in Barcelona and with fate's warning and i i had this fan came up and they signed i signed all these old armored saint records you know and and the fans are asking me what's going on with armored saint you know and i was like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and he said you know i was the same thing you know i was in you know whatever finland or whatever you know and i had the same experience people were I was signing so many albums and they were asking me the same thing so he kind of said to me one time he goes you know what one of these days we're going to work again somehow. I don't know how, but somehow we're going to do something again. And it, we left it at that. This was 90, um, 1999, correct? This, well, this was, this was actually more like 97, 96, oh, okay. 97. So it was like middle of 
you know, middle of uh, his Early career with Anthrax right. and middle of me with Fates and stuff. And so the way it kind of unfolded was that in 1999, um, Anthrax took a bit of a hiatus to do the yep. SOD reunion. Mm -hmm. So Scott and Charlie went and they kind of took some time off. It was like, you know, like a year. Like they, they told the band, like, we're going to not, we're not going to do anything for like a year to one or two years. We're going to do this SOD reunion, do some touring. And I don't remember if they did any recording. I don't think they did or I don't know. Yeah. But speak um, of the devil, the second. Album. Yeah, I guess that's OK. I thought they did that. too. So that, they took some time off to do all that. So John was sort of sort of like, you know, I got nothing to do, you know. And at the time, I was writing a bunch of music um, just for fun, really, because I was involved with another band, a friend of mine who was in a band called Seven Witches. And um, him and I were kind of collaborating on stuff. So I had a, I was writing metal riffs and just, I had a bunch of stuff just lying around. And so one day John and I were talking and I, he was saying to me like, um, I really miss writing, writing with you. And I go, you know, I, I actually have something I think would be really cool. It's kind of, it's kind of heavy, but it's got a bluesy feel to it why don't we just see what happens and just do it for fun so i sent him a demo and then he was like oh this is killer so i got all these great ideas blah 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 so then he came to my house laid down some vocals and we made a demo and it was a, it was like a song and i i, I tried to remember what song it was but it might have been tension maybe um from um revelation and uh we just had so much fun writing together again he goes, what else you got? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I had another thing. I worked up another thing. Are we still in 97? This, this was 1999 now. Oh, right. So this was, this was right when uh, Charlie and Scott left yeah. to do, took time off. So right. he, John basically had downtime. I was also between records with Fate's Warning. So we just, we just started writing for fun. Like it was no Armored Saint talk at all at that point. 1999 then a few months went by and it was like you know we've written like four or five songs now and what I mean should we you know <laughs> mm -hmm. should we call the other guys and should we talk about maybe could we do an Armored Saint record just call it a side project kind of because he was still in Anthrax. I was still in Fate's Warning. You know it, there was no intention to get back together really. It was more like Let's see if maybe we could put a record out. I, yeah, we have time off. Like exactly. why not? at the time, yeah, at the time. So this was 1999. So we had literally not even a whole record written yet. And I called up Brian Slagle, and I said, "Hey, uh, John has some time off. I have some time off with Fates. We're, we've been writing." And I sent him uh, like five songs or something. He goes, "This stuff's killer." And I said. We're thinking about maybe getting together and doing an Armored Saint record kind of as a one off, not as like a, you know, we're going to re we're going to recapture our career or anything like yeah. that. But it we're wasn't just a reunion. To, no, not really. It was like more like just we have a chance to make music right now. Mm -hmm. Let's, should we do it? Let's do it. So he was like, oh, I'm in. So we got the legal stuff out of the way. We called Gonzo and we got Phil and Jeff back and we said, guys, you know, we have some songs written. You guys want to do this? And everybody was like, yeah, let's do it. So that led up to Revelation 2000. If you like this interview, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.